In this video, you will learn why a Salesforce to Salesforce integration may be necessary in specific circumstances and how to set one up using a number of common methods. You will also learn how to follow some best practices when it comes to working with a Salesforce to Salesforce integration. Salesforce to Salesforce integration is something that a select few Salesforce customers may either need to consider. Depending on the business requirements, some businesses may need multiple Salesforce orgs within a single business, while others may need to simply share records with partners that they work with. If your business has multiple Salesforce orgs for different purposes, or you are partnered closely together with another business that uses Salesforce, then you may need to collaborate on records across multiple orgs. Creating a Salesforce to Salesforce connection will allow you to set up the connection between the two orgs and share records between them. Imagine you are working for a small business who are acquired and rather than immediately merging the two orgs, they have decided to run them side by side for the interim. Setting up a Salesforce to Salesforce connection will provide the flexibility to run two orgs side by side and share records between them where necessary. Another example would be if your business manufactures a product and you use Salesforce to keep track on how many products are being built and how many are in stock, but you outsource your selling to another company and they want the ability to collaboratively work on deals in your org. Rather than setting up a partner community for them, which requires standing up of an experience cloud template, purchasing of licenses and uh, configuring permissions, you decide that the best way to work together would be to configure a Salesforce to Salesforce connection between your Salesforce org and theirs. It's important to plan out your Salesforce to Salesforce integration before connecting the orgs together. Here's a few key things you need to take into account. Define object and record scope. Make sure to make a definitive plan as to the exact scope of the integration. If only a subset of data is being synced between Salesforce orgs, or only a single team's data will be impacted, this will need to be communicated and planned for accordingly. Similarly, larger Salesforce to Salesforce integrations can take a lot of time and effort, especially when cleansing larger data sets or merging data from multiple origins and ensuring no duplicate records are created. Keeping a Salesforce to Salesforce integration project within a set budget is important, and this budget should be defined from the outset. Tidy your data. Plan for where your data is going, not where it's coming from. Clean it before setting up a sync to your other Salesforce environment. Ensuring your data is clean, tidy, and the data models of your two orgs are aligned before it's synced means your Salesforce data integrity remains intact across both orgs and your users are still able to gain value from your data. Create an integration plan. There is no point setting up a Salesforce to Salesforce integration and spending time and effort preparing for it and setting it up if it's going to fall apart shortly after kickoff. It's critical to create an integration plan to ensure that the data is validated and sync errors are resolved so as to continue providing value to your business users. The integration plan should detail how data should be organized and structured in both orgs going forward. Things like which data should be kept in which environment, how data should be validated before being stored in either org, who is responsible for data validation, etc. These things should all form part of the integration plan. Create contingency plan. There is a high chance you will run into some kind of a broad block while setting up your Salesforce to Salesforce integration. This will likely be due to data not being organized properly, or data not being formatted correctly, or a validation rule being hit inside of one of your Salesforce orgs. Salesforce best practice is to record the error that you receive. This way, you can continue along your original integration plan as much as possible and tidy up any leftover data at the end rather than getting stuck at a single point. Configuring Salesforce to Salesforce integration using the standard connector. Salesforce has built their own connector that can be used to make it easy for businesses to connect and share records between multiple Salesforce orgs. Unfortunately, this functionality hasn't been maintained very well in recent years, and as such, you will need to configure this functionality within the Salesforce Classic UI, as it's not available in Lightning. Ultimately, there are four key areas that need to be configured when using the standard Salesforce to Salesforce connector. Turn the Salesforce to Salesforce connector on. Create the Salesforce to Salesforce connection. Publish relevant objects and fields. Subscribe to relevant objects and fields. 
There is a few things you need to know about the standard connector in Salesforce. While system administrators can opt to share all records, a majority of users will only be available to forward or share records that they or their subordinates have ownership over. The Salesforce to Salesforce connector only works in Salesforce Classic. This is usually not a great sign for a feature as it's been quite a number of years since Salesforce Lightning came out and a lot of the features that were never migrated were completely replaced. You need to pay special attention to make sure that hierarchical sharing doesn't have a negative impact on your sync. There are a number of considerations when it comes to hierarchical privacy, but a few key ones are as follows. To stop sharing the record, you need to click the Stop Sharing button in the External Sharing Related list. To stop sharing case comments or attachments, you must make the records private. Related records are no longer shared with the connection if the related record is edited from an unshared record. A maximum of 100 tasks per related record can be shared, which includes both open and closed tasks. Update records are processed asynchronously, so there may sometimes be a small delay in record changes appearing across orgs. There are five key steps when setting up Salesforce to Salesforce integration using REST API. Building the REST API endpoints. You will need to build out an endpoint using an Apex class before you are able to connect two Salesforce orgs using REST API. Creating the connected app. Once your endpoints are configured, you need to create a connected app with an app manager. Configuring the auth provider. Now from your other org, you need to create a new auth provider. At this point, you will have a new callback URL generated at the bottom of the page in the Salesforce configuration section. Copy this callback URL and update your callback URL value in the connected app you created in the buffs tab. At this point, you can check your connection between the two orgs and test that it's working as expected so far. Finally, you need to create a named credential so that the org that is making the callouts can connect to the org with the connected app with ease. To do this, search for named credentials in Quick Find and Set Up and click New. Testing your connected app. Finally, you can create a new Apex class in your org too and make sure that everything is working as expected. There are a few things you need to know about the Salesforce to Salesforce integration using REST API. It requires programming skills. It is complicated and requires a lot of time and resources for development, testing, and further maintenance. You can integrate data between Salesforce orgs only. API access is available in the following Salesforce editions. Enterprise, Unlimited, Developer, Performance. So if you have group, essential, or professional editions, you need to consider an upgrade. Salesforce to Salesforce integration using Skyvia. There is one method that you can use to not only build a Salesforce to Salesforce connection, but also infuse your Salesforce data with data from other sources or backup or synchronize your Salesforce data, and that's with Skyvia. Skyvia Salesforce connector is one of many other connectors that you can use to build complex data integrations and connections between multiple sources, including a scenario where you have more than one Salesforce org that you would like to share data between. If the scenario you're working with is that your business has been acquired or has acquired another business, you may need to connect your Salesforce org to another CRM system that isn't Salesforce. Likely, this is something that Skyvia supports quite easily. Unlike the REST API approach, you can run integrations with Skyvia on any Salesforce edition. To create a Salesforce to Salesforce connection in Skyvia, you will need to first authorize and correctly set up an integration with your Salesforce orgs. Sign up at skyvia.com. I already have my Skyvia account, so I'll just click sign in. Then click new, then connection, Find a Salesforce connector from the list and configure your org details. Make sure to use auth 2.0 and click sign in with Salesforce. Remember which credentials you use with each authentication and name the Skyvia connections accordingly. Repeat this for the other Salesforce org and in the future you can also connect to any other org you would like as well, which may or may not be a Salesforce org. I already created test Salesforce connections, so I can find them in the list of available connections. Create an import package to synchronize your data one way. 
Once you have created a connection for each org you want to sync, you need to create an import package between them. Click New at the top of the Skyvia app and then click Import in the Integration tab. Here you are able to specify source and target settings. Under Source, click Data Source, Database or Cloud App, then select the two Salesforce org connections that you created in Step 1. Once you've selected the two orgs you are wanting to synchronize data between, you need to create a task. Click Add New button. Let's say we want to integrate contacts of one Salesforce org with the other. Select the contact object and specify the filters if necessary. Today I modified five contacts in my org one and I want them to be integrated. On the next page, also select the contact object. Select an operation you want to apply to your task. Insert, update, absurd or delete. Insert imports records created since the previous package run or package creation if the package was never run. Update imports both records that were created and records that were modified since the previous package run. Absurd updates a record if it exists or insert a new record. This allows you to avoid inserting duplicate data. Delete determines the records to delete by their ID primary key values. I'll select the insert operation because I know for sure that all the records I'm going to import to the org2 will be new. On the third page, you've got the opportunity to configure how the fields from each side should align. The columns with the same names are mapped automatically. I'll remove IDs columns from the mapping setting as I don't need to keep relations in the org2. I just need to integrate contacts from the org1 to the org2 so that the sales team that operates the org2 can create their own accounts, opportunities, tasks and other objects related to contacts I integrated. If you would need to keep relations, I suggest configuring target lookup mapping here. Skavi also supports column, constant, expression, source lookup, external ID and relation mapping. Save your task and validate the package. Click Create and run your import package. As you see, we have just imported five records from one Salesforce org to the other. Let's find these contacts in my Salesforce org too. But first, I will show you these contacts in my org 1. As you see, the contacts have been successfully integrated from the org1 to the org2. Depending on the complexity of your import package, your business rules and your business requirements, you will need to configure the schedule yourself. Your integrations can run on a certain days of the month, week, daily, recur every few hours or even minutes. so you can set up near real-time data loading. Configure this setting according to your own needs. Considerations when integrating Salesforce to Salesforce using Skyvia. You may notice that setting up a connection through Skyvia is significantly easier than the other options and far more flexible. This is the way that Skyvia has been designed. It's as simple as creating a connection, creating a package, scheduling automatic package execution. This example uses import package for syncing data in one direction. However, Skyvia also has tools for bidirectional synchronization too, synchronization package. What is also important to know is that among other things, Skyvia also allows mass updating records in Salesforce which can be of help when you need to quickly update large data volumes and do it quickly and easily with minimum efforts. 
For this, you can select CSV files manually uploaded from your browser or automatically upload from one of the supported file storages. As a data source, you can also select database or cloud app from this list. Salesforce data archiving is also possible with Kavia. For this, one can use Kavia data replication to retain a full replica of Salesforce data as a data archive in one of these databases or data warehouses. Remember to always keep a backup of your data and create a contingency plan for any errors you may come across. You can use Kavia backup for this. I'm obviously biased when I'm saying this, but I believe that there is a higher chance Kavia is the best choice for your business when it comes to cost, practicality, and flexibility of your Salesforce to Salesforce integration. Considering what can be done with the building connectors, Skyvia offers more than just Salesforce to Salesforce integration within the majority of their pricing plans. You can connect to a data warehouse, more than two Salesforce orgs, other CRM systems, other business systems, etc. Each connector you configure simply allows you to expand your data connectivity across Skyvia, enriching your Salesforce data more and more each time. Skyvia is also much easier to set up than the alternatives, especially when considering the flexibility of the REST API versus Skyvia and the amount of effort required to set both up. Using no-code web interface, Skyvia has similar flexibility to what can otherwise only be achieved through an API integration. Skyvia integration pipelines start from just $19 per month and two weeks trial available for any plan. You can enable trial access in the account section. If you have any questions regarding your use case, please let us know over email. Thanks for watching.